Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in Physics Sergi Originals and I have brought forward to you a modified version of a very famous spiral train track problem. Uh, it's actually called a spiral train track problem in, uh, on the internet but uh, I would say that it is more of a uh, path on a cone which is helical, right? So spiral is the word that is usually reserved for a planar structure. So names aside, uh, I have modified this into a JE level kinematics and rotation uh, conceptual problem. So let's have a look. Please do give it a try and uh, do come back for the concept and the explanation. And I'll top it off at the end of the video with two practice problems on a similar kind. Okay, so let me go ahead with the formal wording. The diagram illustrates a right circular cone shaped hypothetical mountain, right? Something on the right side of apex O. If you build a shortest distance track for a sightseeing train, which goes exactly once around the mountain in which the track starts at point A and ends up at point B, it should go around like this from behind and then end at a point B. And this point B, the track will go first uphill and then it will go downhill. So during this, it will actually climb up and down. A and B will lie on the same slant line from A to apex O such that the distance between them along the slant line ABO, right? AB is 10 kilometer and radius is 20 kilometer for this particular thing and slant height is 60. Okay, so along this particular line ABO, AB's length was 10. The speed of the train, and please do consider it during this problem as a particle, no dimensions of the train, right, is to be taken. It is set at a constant magnitude of 20 kmph while it goes around this curved path. Mark the correct statements pertaining to this particular situation, okay? So the first statement, at the instant of shortest distance from O, which is the apex, angular velocity of the train about O is maximum. The journey time of the train is route 91 by 20 hours. The length of the downhill part of the journey, that is the part where the train is moving down, okay, its uh, height with respect to ground is reducing, is this much quantity. The velocity of train is always perpendicular to the line joining O to the train. So since train is a particle, as it moves, if you join the line of the apex O to the train, that would be always perpendicular to velocity is the fourth statement, okay. So before we move on to the solution, and one small request again, um, because this video was a lot of fun and slightly easier to make as compared to the previous one. So I've reduced the number of likes. I would, I'm very eager to actually upload the next video. So let's see how quickly you can reach this target so that I can upload it during the weekend itself. Okay, and thanks a lot. Uh, whether you reach the target or not, unconditionally, I uh, love your support and please do keep doing whatever you're doing and please do share the channel so that we can uh, start getting more and more subscribers. Okay, so it gives, gives me a lot of motivation to bring in new concepts and videos on this channel. Okay, so now the question is that whenever this kind of cone is being given and you are supposed to answer for the shortest journey time, which is in, in this problem related to shortest journey path because speed is fixed. So journey time is shortest if the path traveled is shortest. So first of all, in order to do that, we'll try to open up this cone because the path is on the curved surface. It would be easier or beneficial to see it on a plain paper. Okay, so we'll take a scissors in our mind. It's a hypothetical cutting. Cut this cone along OA like this. Imagine this is like your birthday cone, party cone cap that we wear during the birthday parties. Okay, childhood birthday parties. So and uh, take that birthday cone and cut it along the slant height o OA. Then spread it on a piece of paper like this. Now, when you spread it, this A can be divided into two points. There is a left side A and a right side A. So when you spread it, there will be two A's on that paper. So there will be two OA's that you have spread. So you want to turn it back, this OA will coincide with this OA. I hope you recognize what I said. So this red color curvilinear path in the diagram in this paper will now become a straight line path. Okay, since B is at a distance of 50 from OA, so this OA is 60, this OB is going to be 50. Okay, right. Now, let's calculate this angle. Now, this has become a sector of a circle. It's a planar diagram. So, I can use the length of this bottom path, which is nothing but the perimeter of the base, right? 
when you spread it should be 2 pi r where r is 20 so this should be 40 pi so in this sector diagram length of the arc would be 40 pi radius of this would be 60 so the angle theta using this formula would now become 2 pi by 3 so this sector is now 2 pi by 3 radians which is 120 degrees so once you get that angle we'll borrow this picture into the next diagram okay now we are trying to calculate what is the length of this a b line which is the shortest distance because it's a straight line had you taken any other path it would have been actually curved from this point to this point all other curved points here would be uh, curved paths would be longer distances than the straight, straight line path in the plane so to get this a b i'll use cosine rule in this a o b triangle a b square therefore is equal to a o square plus o b square minus 2 a o o b into cos of this included angle Okay, cos 2 pi by 3, not to forget, is a minus half. So this becomes plus here with a half substitution. So when you solve for that, AB comes out to be 10 root 91. And therefore, the shortest journey time for that sightseeing train would be 10 root 91 divided by 20 kmph that he has already set for the train. Gives you root 91 by 2. I think that was one of the options given. Okay, now let's move ahead. What is this point P? As you move on this paper, right, along the straight line, which is actually a curve in reality on the cone, you can join the train's different points with the apex point O with straight lines. And you could see the distance between the apex point and the train point is going to vary. It would be the largest at the start. And as the train moves, it's decreasing, which means the train is going uphill. And it will be at the shortest distance from O at this perpendicular distance point P. P is that point where OP is perpendicular to AB. And then it will start going uh, closer to the point O, then it is going to go actually uh, um, in an uphill manner. Okay, right. So this part would be uh, going to be um, a decreasing distance, therefore it's uphill. And this is going to be an increasing distance. So this is going to be downhill. All right, so keeping that in mind, let's now mark it in the diagram. Let's left side diagram, you could see this is the uphill motion and this is going to be downhill motion. Uh, you might see this in this diagram. It's actually the distance from O that decides the uphill and downhill. Don't, don't think that this is going up on the paper. This is a hypothetical diagram. The uphill idea or a down, downhill idea is based on the distance from apex O. In the actual picture, if the distance from apex O is decreasing, then the train is moving down. Oh, sorry, train is moving up, it, it's going closer to O. If the distance from apex O is increasing, then the train is moving down. Okay, so that's why I was able to label this part PB motion as the downhill motion. Now, in order to get this downhill length PB, I need in this triangle the beta. For this beta, I'll take the bigger triangle and use sine rule. Okay, do you see this uh, triangle AOB in which we already ascertained the journey distance as 10 root 91. So I'll use sine rule in this. So AB divided by sine 120 should be OA, which is this 60 divided by sine beta. Sine beta comes out to be this number upon substitutions of these. And then I'll get the cos beta required. Once you get the cos beta, then the value of PB here would be OB cos beta, which I end up getting 400 root 91. Okay, so the downhill length, I think he gave 209 root 9 by root 91. So that is wrong. So this is the actual value. And these are the practice problems. Let me mark the answer before we move on to the practice problems, just for your convenience. Okay, right. So at the instant of shortest distance from O, which is that P point, the angular velocity of train about O is maximum. Obviously the speed is same, the distance shortest, angular velocity is going to be a maximum quantity. So this is correct. Journey time was root 91 by two, that was right. The length of the downhill part, we got 400 by root 91, this was wrong. Velocity of the train is always perpendicular to the line joining the point O. This is wrong because it did so only at one point, that is point P. At rest of the places, this was not correct. So A and B are the correct answers. So let's move ahead with the practice problems. Similar ones, very simple ones actually. You may not even need, I think, my um, guidance in this, right? So in case you need, I will come up with the problem solution in physics surgery quick. Actually, this was an original problem, again, inspired by that same thing. But this is so easy that I'll cover it in quickies if required. Okay, 
Just write, comment your answer along with the timestamp below. I'll definitely answer whether your response is correct or not. Okay, so similar question, small, small change. Insect starts here, comes back to the same point in this. Okay, so read through all the four options and give me the response. Practice problem number two. I found this in one of the recent AITS papers. So I thought you would be interested in it. It's the reverse of it. There is actually a semicircle which is being bound into a cone like this. So it's a reverse of what we did in the first problem. So uh, one is an NLM problem and second one is the reflection or vectors problem, you should say. Okay, right. So I hope you enjoy these two practice problems and give me the response. I want more enjoyment. Please do join the QOTD, that is question of the day challenge that is right now going on uh, among very brilliant students. Students are the creators. I chip in with one or two questions per week, but mostly the questions are being created by uh, exceptional students there and they come up with unique solutions and more than one solution. So it would be really nice to have you there in the Discord server. I, I will keep posting the questions in the uh, community tab of the channel. So please do keep a tab on that. And uh, you can put a notification so that you can receive the questions uh, so, uh, whenever you are not on YouTube. And link of this uh, video about the Discord server is uh, shared in the description below or on the i button above. Please do check out what is Discord and what the hell is all this about, okay? So it would be useful for you. And apart from Physics Surgery Originals, as I keep saying, there are many relevant parallel series running in this channel. There is everything for everyone. So please make sure you explore these playlists in the description below. Uh, watch three or four videos before your JE advanced examination per day so that you can catch up with 220 plus unique videos that you may not find in other channels. So I'm not saying my channel is the best, but uh, I would say my channel would be one of the most relevant things that people will uh, get on YouTube where JE preparation edge will be there. Okay, so that's something that I'm very confident about. I'm also confident that you like, share and subscribe to this channel and uh, provide me with the motivation to see you as soon as possible in the next upcoming video. Thanks a lot and see you in the next one.